use it, um, especially with students. Um, we can refer to it as, this is our lid, and we'll ask, you know, where's your lid? And it's just a great self-assessment tool to be like, ah, right now I feel like my lid's a little bit flipped. And then at that moment, I'm self-assessing. I'm saying, I am identifying the stress for myself and I need to do something to disrupt that stress response and bring myself back to this calm place. So it's really helpful in these moments to just check in with yourself and be like, okay, well, where's my lid right now? How am I able to handle all this stress? Is this a good time for me to be sitting down and doing all that really heady work if I'm like this? Is this a good time for me to be having that serious heart to heart with someone if I'm like this? Perhaps not. So then we wanna find ways that we can help naturally calm ourselves and be able to bring our frontal lobe um, and just our capacity for um, thoughtful, mindful engagement back online. And what can trigger us, what can get us to this place can be uncertainty. And we're living in that right now. Lack of information, loss of control. All those things sound familiar right now. I'm kind of feeling those things. It's very easy to get triggered. Um, but because we are these really beautiful, complex biology of emotion and thoughts and beliefs and attitudes, we can, um, we can influence that. We can build greater psychological resiliency by just the simple actions that, and the tools that we're gonna talk about um, shortly. Where the role of these mind-body medicine techniques, breathing, movement, good nourishment, visualization, meditation, these things come in because they help us to come back to this place of deeper relaxation, reduced stress, reduced anxiety, feelings of depression. We'll often notice that people have fewer physical symptoms of illness and less pain, less fatigue, enhanced immune system. And really like right now, what I'm thinking about is how do I support my immune system? How do I keep myself strong and resilient knowing that there's this threat in the world and, and actually there's a great link between stress and immune function. So if I can make the case again for being able to manage our own stress, it really is because it will boost our immune system. Um, is there anything you wanted to add to that, Jewel? Um, yeah, just that, uh, just to kind of amplifying the, the um, phenomenon that when we are in this, when we are stressed, and especially when we're in this collective stress, this, this field of stress, if you will, um, it's even harder to, to manage your own triggers because you're still getting all this input mm -hmm. from outside of you. So even though you can be like really good at, if you, you may have already been really good at managing your own stress, but suddenly you have this extra load of input on that stress response, and so maybe what was easier before is suddenly all of a sudden not so easy because of the input. So, it, so really want to acknowledge that mm -hmm. and acknowledge the importance of monitoring your input during this time. You know, yes, stay atten attention to the news according to what you need to know, but after that, turn it off. Mm -hmm. And and choose where your focus goes. Choose what you're going to let into your, into your awareness. This is a really important thing right now. You know, that we, we, be, we be at choice. We, we're not at choice about the shutdown. We're not at choice about the virus. This is happening. We're not at choice about the state of the planet climate change, all these other things. Um, but we are at choice at how we want to tune ourselves and then begin to build how we, how we want to have our lives be and how we want to affect other people around us. So, so the stress response is going to be more stressed, if you will, <laughs> right now. I just wanted to 
to kind of amplify that. Yeah, I appreciate you saying that. It's true. And it also, um, in my mind, makes the case for why it's so important for us to um, do these skills so that we're not being so reactive. It's really easy to get caught up. Like I had mentioned, fear being contagious. It definitely is. But then so is calm. So is love. So is kindness. And so it is a choice. Um, but how do we identify when we need to interrupt our own stress patterns and then engage in the practices so that we don't keep looping? You know what I mean when I'm saying looping? Like psychologically, we could have thought patterns and then we loop and those things cycle over and over and those thought patterns might not be the most helpful. And so to be able to disrupt that is quite important. Um, disruption as a, a healthy influence in this case, we want to dis <clears throat> excuse me, disrupt stress patterns. Um, and then I also think, and this is maybe just going a little bit, um, meta or esoteric, but when I think about the state of the planet and what's happening with the planet and how humans have been living and in relationship with the planet uh, or the majority of humans, um, that we're in a stress re response, we're in a stress relationship, the planet is stressed. And so not only are we disrupting the stress pattern for ourselves, but I think that this opportunity right now to shelter in place, to slow down, to pause, um, brings a lot of dangers and, and risks, but it also brings this opportunity to disrupt a very dysfunctional way of being and existing on the planet at this time. Um, and I'm, I'm just, I'm mindful of that. I'm thinking that, you know, when we, interrupt our stress response patterns, we get the opportunity to engage in new ways of being. And so here we are collectively on the planet, nothing has galvanized us more than at this moment in time, not climate change, not hunger, not anything except this moment in time, we have all paused to protect and safeguard our health. This is an opportunity, this disruptive force to reevaluate how we are and how we're living on the planet and engage in new ways of being. So I just kind of wanted to mention that, to take this opportunity for as a, a disruption in our own stressful way of being. Um, part of it, what we want is to be resilient, right? And, and psychological and emotional resilience refers to our ability to adapt to these stressful situations or crises they don't seem to be slowing down these crises. They seem to just kind of be rolling. Um, and so I want to point out a few helpful tools before we start our Skillshare. And that is to cultivate psychological resiliency, we really need to trust our grieving process and the natural flow of emotions. I want to acknowledge right now, I feel deep grief. There are people in my family who have been diagnosed with COVID-19. There are my loved ones who have been exposed. This is hitting home in a very real way. I am feeling grief. Um, and, and I can feel it in my body and I can feel it as I'm moving through the world. And it's very important just to acknowledge all the feelings that come up with this. All, all our feelings need to be acknowledged so that they can move. Um, I want to encourage us all to engage with curiosity and compassion, to really listen to our bodies, to be aware of our somatic experiences, and Jewel will offer some tools for that in a bit. Um, also, to be really mindful of our narrative, like how are we telling the story of this time? How are we telling it to ourselves? How are we telling it to each other? What are the stories we're telling our children? I think that this is an opportunity to reframe things. And this is really where we get to deepen into being creative. Because when we engage in creative expression, creativity, art forms, we innovate. Um, we're using more of our brain's potential for problem solving. And it helps us to consciously respond and creatively adapt 
and psychologically transform. I think right now we're all being called to psychologically transform. And so how do we do that? Well, with kindness and love for ourselves and with curiosity and creativity. And um, so that's why we designed the skills that we want to share today because of that. Yeah, the, the skills that we're sharing, I, I, I expect that probably all of you already do them to, in some way or another, some degree or another. So it's not going to be any, anything necessarily new or innovative or profound, um, but just an emphasis and maybe a particular um, approach uh, is what we're, you know, we're going to be offering. So um, we're going to take you through just a few, um, a few of them experientially. And then, and then we'll give you a kind of name a few others that you can, uh, that are, we also think are super important to name. Uh, let's see. So the first one is um, a really, really important one. It's sort of like the base of everything uh, I do in my stress response. Uh, we begin to, as, we, as we've built our ability to witness and pay attention to experience our bodies, we know when we don't feel right. We begin to get better and better at catching that before the cascade of stress response happens in our body, before we go into full on, you know, um, like that, uh, we can, we, we, this is why the daily practice is so important because we, we get better and better at identifying uh, before that happens, because when it, by the time it does happen, it is, it is harder to pull ourselves back. Um, so, so the key is this let, uh, to identify when you begin to feel like something's going on. I don't feel right in my body. I'm, my head is spinning. Um, I'm getting overwhelmed. Um, I'm checking out. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm spinning. Um, or I'm, getting really like heavy or depressed. I mean, there's lots of different ways we can go, but we begin to recognize all of these feelings that are telling us we're not present and we're not feeling centered and good in our bodies right now. So the, the first thing I do is ground. So grounding is like the, the, the base of everything. So I'm gonna just take you through a very short, minute or two, like we did at the beginning of this call, what grounding does. I'm gonna ground right now with all of you. So grounding just means that I feel the earth beneath me. I feel the weight of my body. I feel the connection of my body with the earth. And I do this through either feeling that feet flat on the floor, I can feel the earth beneath my feet. I could feel the weight of my torso sitting or laying, whatever position I'm in, I feel the weight of that. I let my breath drop down into the bottom of my belly. So grounding is all about bringing your attention down down, down, down into the physical place that you are, the earth right beneath you, your body right here and right now. That's all. Some people like to imagine a cord that goes all the way down into the center of the earth. That's a fun thing to do, and that can be very helpful too. Just notice this cord coming down from the bottom of your spine all the way into the earth. Imagine it going into the center of the earth, and it's just holding you there. It's tethering you. In this way, you feel this sense of being held, safety, reconnection, It helps us to stop 
for a moment. Take a pause. So this is why grounding is so important. At any time you begin to notice yourself going into stress, taking a moment and just feeling the earth beneath you, feeling your feet, feeling the weight of your body, feeling this, imagining this cord if you like, Noticing the environment around you too can be very grounding. And from there, you can do whatever other tools you want. But usually we go right into, after grounding, I go right into doing some breathing, which Nicole is going to take you through now. Thank you, Jewel. I want to also just observe that since most of us are spending a lot of time indoors and our communication relies on technology, we're being exposed to electromagnetic frequencies that can be very dysregulating and amplify feelings of anxiety. And so the grounding that Jewel described, sometimes I will feel just a lot from being on the computer around the, the wireless technology and I'll actually go outside and take my shoes off, put my, my feet on the earth to do some grounding like that. It helps to um, sort of recalibrate our nervous system. So I wanna offer that as well. Um, so since you're in this lovely grounded place that Jewel invoked, I'd like to invite us to just do some breathing. And remember that breath is life. And our breath is the key to controlling our stress response. So the first thing that I do, like I'll work like Jewel does and get myself calm and centered and visualize myself rooted, really rooted to the planet. And then I breathe in gently through my nose bringing the breath down into my belly. I'm not bringing the breath up in my chest. I'm letting my belly fill. And as I'm breathing in, I think soft. And as I exhale out, I think belly. So I'm giving myself the suggestion of soft belly while I'm breathing. So let's practice that together. Breathing in, through the nose, letting our bellies fill, thinking soft, exhaling out either through your nose or your mouth, thinking belly, soft, belly. Do that a couple more times and on the exhale, let's allow our exhale to deepen and extend. And so when I breathe in and then exhale out longer than my inhalation, and I'm really bringing the front of my belly to the back and I'm expending all of that air that's in me, I'm stimulating the vagus nerve that runs down through my belly. The vagus nerve is a nerve that, wand it's actually called the wandering nerve. It wanders from the base of our spine all the way up to our brain. When we exhale out, such that our stomach sort of contracts in, we stimulate that vagus nerve. And when we do so, we're essentially telling our body, it's safe to relax now. Let's practice that breath in and exhale out knowing that it's safe to relax now. Good, one other thing about breath that I, I find quite moving. Um, when we breathe in, we inspire. So when we're born, we are inspired. Our first breath, we inspire life. When we breathe out, we are expiring. When we die, we have that last breath. That's the expiration of life. But when we breathe together, 
We are conspiring. So we're conspiring when we're choosing our breath, when we're choosing to be mindful, we're conspiring. So I like to imagine that when we're all breathing together, we're conspiring for the health of all beings. Jewel, would you like to lead us through some somatic meditation? Yes. So um, somatic meditation simply means that we're tuning into our bodies. And there's a real, I, I'm just going to kind of give the foundation of it. Um, this type of work is something that uh, I use for myself for healing just about anything, any of my experiences and challenges and use with my clients. So we'll be doing a longer uh, class on this alone at some point and feel free to contact me if you have any questions. But basically we just take that experience that you've just had with the breathing and just stay there right now with the breathing into your belly. Feeling the expansion and contraction of your breath, letting the breath be at its own natural pace. And just notice now what you're feeling in your body. Notice anything that's going on in your body right now. Um, maybe there's a place in your body that feels particularly tight, or maybe there's some pain or discomfort. And if you don't have any of those, then just stay with your belly. That's great. But if you do have a place in your body that feels a little um, challenged, maybe there's some tightness or some pain or discomfort, I invite you to take your breath to that place in your body, wherever it is. Doesn't matter where it is. It can be in your feet. It can be in your head. It can be anywhere in between. So take your breath, imagining your breath going right to that place in your body. And imagine your breath going in and out of that area. And as, it, as you breathe in, imagine that breath expanding into that place. And just notice we're not trying to do anything, analyze or fix anything at all about this particular area of your body. We're simply breathing and noticing. And as you breathe out, imagine you're just feeling that, whatever that is. Maybe it's talking to you. Maybe there's something that it has to say. Maybe there's an image or a feeling associated. So we take the time to witness whatever that is that emerges. If something doesn't emerge, that's okay. We just breathe into it and breathe out of it. And just relax into this space of witnessing our breath moving through this area. And if we've been doing this for a while, we can move into breathing into an, an invitation, perhaps, of openness into this area. And as we breathe out, an invitation to release. And the body will tell you whatever it wants to tell you. The body is incredibly intelligent. And we take this time in this meditation to listen to the body and what it has to say. And if we are patient and do this for a while and listen, the body will tell us what's going on in this area and why or anything we need to know guiding us in how to be with this discomfort in a better way, a more effective way. So 
taking another moment just to breathe in and out of that area. Notice anything that comes up. And we'll come back to our bellies. Sometimes something that can come up that's pretty common is the body will want to move or shake. Um, that's the nervous system wanting to release. It's a good thing. And we, um, it will benefit us greatly if we allow the body to do what it wants to naturally do and without judging it or thinking it's weird. We let the body shake, we let the body move, we let the body do what it wants to do. Sometimes that area will get a little feeling of jerkiness or release, that's good. So we can go into actually another practice now that Nicole will take us through, which is actually intentionally shaking and moving, because sometimes that can also get things going. Um, I notice for myself that when I do um, that somatic meditation, I want to move. I'll feel into the place where, and I'll, I might feel restriction or locking. And I just do a practice called authentic movement. I listen to my body. And if my body says, oh, move here and stretch this way, then that's what I'm going to do. Um, but then also shaking is super beneficial we oftentimes forget we are animals, right? And we talked about that cascade of stress hormones that can happen. Well, once those hormones are released, it can be really difficult to sit still. It can be really difficult to be in a quiet meditation. And so moving meditations can be very helpful. Walking meditations and this practice called shaking. So in, in the wild, if an animal is feeling threatened, it will engage in that fight or flight response or freeze. Um, and if an animal is able to escape, it will often be so filled with these stress hormones, it'll go into the bushes and sh it literally, they'll shake it off. And what that does is it helps our body to metabolize whatever stress hormones have been released. And so because we are animals too, we can do this same thing. And I do it often and I'll do it in very interesting places. Um, but essentially I'm just gonna stand up so you can see, I'm just going to stand with my feet apart. You can't see that part. I'm gonna bend my knees and I'm just gonna let my body soften and relax and I'm gonna shake. You can do it in a chair. You can do it lying in bed. You can shake certain parts of your bodies and not other parts of your body. It doesn't matter, but the idea is you're gonna get movement happening in your body. So I love that those of you I can see on, on camera, that's great, shake it up. If I can't see you, I don't know if you're doing it, but I'm trusting that you are. And the idea is for a, you know, a short period of time, you can do it from two minutes, you can do it all the way up to 30 minutes. There really aren't any restrictions with this. Just listen to your body and shake it off. And then after you're done shaking, Take a moment, just quiet, and do that grounding practice that Jewel taught us earlier. Great, I love it. I'm seeing you guys shaking. Thank you. Good. So when the call's over, perhaps you can all just take a, maybe five minutes and shake. And it's fun to do it to some fun music, some drumming, some, um, we use Osho Kundalini music when we do this sometimes. It's, it's very stimulating. Um, and it really does help, like, lift our energy. Being physical and having um, the opportunity for exercise during this time is really very important because it releases tension and the built-up energies. It breaks up our habitual physical, emotional, and holding patterns. It increases our awareness of our body and it'll help raise our energy. That's fun. So after um, shaking, and actually, I could use a whole lot more shaking. I could probably do a half hour of shaking right now. And I, I highly recommend that. Um, when, when all else fails, get up and shake <laughs> when you're stressed. It's very effective. Get up and move, dance, shake, whatever. But um, 
So let's say I just shake, I shook for a half hour and then I want to do a nice um, meditation and my body's moving. I've got everything flowing again. I've released some tension. Um, a, a really nice meditation. I, I do this meditation as often as I can. And whenever I feel um, like I did this meditation when I felt the dread and the fear. So whenever I'm getting triggered, this is a, one of the more effective uh, don't be fooled by the simplicity of this. It's extremely effective. And you may, some of you may have heard of heart math. So this is a heart math technique. So taking a moment now to just go back to uh, your breath. And now imagine that breath moving in and out of your heart. So it's moving in and out of the center of your chest, the center of your heart. So as you're breathing in, you're feeling this spaciousness coming in to your chest. And as you breathe out, you feel this deeper relaxation. Breathing in and out of your heart. Breathing in and out of your heart. And as we breathe in, we can also bring in a feeling that brings us joy. I like to use gratitude. It's very powerful. So I think of something that I'm grateful for. Sometimes I can just bring the very energy of gratitude without doing that, but it helps to think of something or someone that I feel a lot of gratitude for. And then I bring, I feel the energy of that gratitude in my heart. And then you can just feel what that feels like, that gratitude. And, and at some point you don't even need to think about that something or someone anymore. You, understand, you feel the, the energy of gratitude itself. So you breathe that into your heart. And continuing to breathe in and out of your heart. So when I felt that dread, I noticed the tightness in my body. I noticed things shutting down. I went into my heart. I breathed into my heart and I felt, I brought in, invited in this feeling of gratitude. And I made a choice. I wanna feel grateful right now. And the dread just dissipated. Breathing in that gratitude and breathing out. After I get centered and feel this wonderful coherence in my body, feel present and centered, and happy, joyful, if I do this for a while. From that place, I can maybe start expressing in some creative practice, which Nicole will now lead us through. I mentioned earlier the role of creativity as um, supportive to our psychological resilience. So when I think about creativity, um, I think about all the modalities of art. Um, there's singing and dancing and sounding. There's writing, poetry, storytelling. There's the visual arts, um, movement arts, really anything that we can do that's creative and self-expressive will be helpful for us as we navigate these times. It helps take 
what might be um, inside and, and bring it out. And what I love about creativity is it cr creates this sort of feedback loop that informs about ourselves and where we're at. And um, Jewel, I'm wondering if we should segue into the guided imagery. Uh, not yet. We are going to just give the toolkit and. Um, um, okay. So then before we do that, what I want to say, um, what I'm feeling most called to express around creativity is that the, this situation that we're in is unprecedented. We've never been here before. And so it calls upon us to tap into our inner creativity in response to it. I'm someone who firmly believes the answers that we need to solve the problems that we're dealing with in the world do not exist outside of ourselves. They're within us. And the more that we can attune to ourselves, listen to our inner wisdom, express our creativity, we will be innovating and bringing to life the creative solutions that we need to be implementing at this. And so um, I also want to say this, 45 minutes of creative activity, so like 45 minutes of something as simple as coloring in a coloring book, reduces our stress hormones and increases serotonin and dopamine production, which are our feel-good hormones. So think about that, 45 minutes of doodling or drawing or sculpting or planting in your garden, all of those creative acts are going to stimulate serotonin and dopamine in the brain. Okay, so um, we're just gonna name a few other things that are important for you to put in your toolkit. Those are the things that we wanted to take you through experientially. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna go through the list really, uh, really quickly here. Um, we are kind of going a little bit longer in time than we thought we would have more time to do this 10 minute meditation and five minute writing practice. So um, we may need to either shorten that or we may, might need to ask um, permission to go longer. If people really, and I think what it will do is after I go through the list, I'm gonna just take a, a vote from people and uh, see if, if you guys wanna do that or if you want it, or, or we can just close this hour and a half after going through the toolkit and answering any questions and then stay on the line for those that want to do the meditation at the, um, at the uh, 11.30 Pacific time mark, the hour and a half mark, which uh, makes more sense. So, the, so, um, so after I finish this list, we'll, we'll check in about that. Um, so the list, the uh, first thing on the list is like, what are some, some things that you can put in your toolkit that, you know, make a, uh, just to pull out when needed or as daily practice tools. Um, I was gonna uh, also mention about tapping. I'm not gonna go through the tapping with you. Um, I don't do it myself, but I know a lot of people that do do it and get a lot of benefit from that. Um, but I do, when I'm stressed, I do like to tell people about just the quick acupressure points that I find extremely helpful. If you're feeling triggered or stressed, especially when you're really, like, really triggered and you're, like, feeling anxiety, a quick go-to is simply tap your sternum, or you can press it and, and apply some pressure. You can massage it. It's up to you, tapping massaging, pressing. This is called the serenity point. It's a well-known pressure point that can help your nervous system start to ramp down. So it's a quick thing. If you can't think of anything else, go right here and just breathe. So the breath is your, is your single best tool. And then other things like this, these tools are quick and easy too that you can add to your breath. So I, I just feel stressed, I breathe, and I massage the serenity point. There are a bunch of other pressure points, which I'm not gonna go into um, right now, but uh, that are also really helpful to know. So the list would be um, tools and practices. Um, for those of you that are inclined, I 
always recommend creating sacred space every day through uh, practice of um, meditation and prayer, um, whatever that means to you. But for me, it just means connecting with the whole and coming to that deeper space. So mindfulness techniques are also really important. Mindfulness means that we just come into the present time with whatever it is we're doing, whether it's eating, walking, talking, whatever it is, we become mindful of it. So we bring our awareness and our presence and our attention to that activity. Singing, toning, as uh, um, Nicole mentioned, really helpful. They, they actually um, help build the resilience of the vagus nerve. Singing and toning do. Very, very important to, to keep the vagus nerve in um, good condition. Um, quality sleep, sleeping enough is, we should never underestimate how important that is. So um, make th making that a priority. Sleep more if you need to, don't, don't feel guilty. Um, water and good nutrition. I mean, these things, we know these things, but it's just, and we think, you know, oh sure I do that, but it's so important. It really can be the difference between feeling good and feeling bad if we're not drinking enough water, we're not getting enough sleep um, and good nutrition. Getting out in nature, getting on the ground, we, as we talked about, gardening is incredible therapy. I've been doing a lot of that. Social connections. Uh, it's really important to just, just keep mindful of, of, of reaching out and, and staying connected. This is for our health. Keeping a balance in our life of, of what we do, our personal practice and our social um, practices. Then there's a variety of self-care stuff we can do around essential oils and herbs and self-massage and self-care, um, you know, according to our, our preferences. But I always recommend that we have some kind of treaty thing that we do for ourselves every day that involves some kind of self-care extra thing. Um, Check-in buddies are great. A friend that calls in on you or that you call in on and just check in, you know, make an agreement. Hey, you know, I got your back. It's amazing how much of a difference that can be because it just makes us feel safe and contained and held knowing there's somebody out there that's going to check in on us. And having animals around is, if you have animals around, that's also a big plus. And another really big one is helping others. As we help ourselves, as we build our own resilience, and it's, it's, a, known, um, it's a known fact that, that as we also serve the community and serve others, it builds our own personal resilience as well. We don't want to overgive or go into caretaking. It's a balance, but helping others is a really important part of the equation. So that's the list. And I think um, uh, we're going to just check in now. And we've got, uh, why don't we take any questions and answers and let's check in and see if people want to um, either go into the meditation now and go and we'll go over time because it's going to take about 15 minutes, 10 minutes for the meditation and five minutes for the writing practice creative expression part after the meditation. We can wait until um, the end of this call, take questions and sharing right now and then and then do the meditation for those that want to um, do that or we could start it now and then just go over time. So why don't people just go ahead and um, chime in, either uh, raise your hand or chat, and we'll um, see what people would like to do. So let's see, maybe what I'll do is, um, we don't have everybody's video up, so I can't see like people all doing, um, thumbs up. Um, why don't we do it the sociocratic way and we'll see what um, what's being offered and then if there's any objections, <laughs> if there's no objections, we'll do that. So questions and meditation. Someone's got to go in five, Richard's got to go in five minutes. Someone's got to, wants the meditation now. I can stay longer, about 15 minutes. Okay, so the sense I'm getting 
is let's do questions now. And then, um, and then begin the meditation and people can choose to leave. We'll do questions in a way that's kind of a, a little bit of a closing and then people can choose to stay and do the meditation or leave. How does that sound? Is there any, any objections to that? Okay. Great. So any questions? I just wanna say thank you to those who are willing to hang out a little bit longer. I think that it will be worthwhile. We'll do a guided visualization to find a, a special place and then invoke in um, um, our inner wisdom to speak to us, to guide us in what we might um, be able to do at this time. So any, um, any, any burning questions that anybody has, please go ahead and put them in the chat. I see here that Robert would like to know more about other pressure points. Okay, sure. Another great pressure point is this, right between the thumb and forefinger on each hand. That goes right to our, our gut brain, which is our animal instinctual aspect of our, of our being. And it just helps to kind of, you know, like that's when we're stressed, that usually is what kicks in, right? Our gut. So, um, so that just really helps it kind of start to just calm down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Any uh, bilateral tapping, things that stimulate alternately from one side of the body to the other can yeah. help our nervous system reintegrate. So I like to tap right underneath my collarbone here. Uh, in Chinese medicine, they refer to this as the sea of tranquility. So I like to imagine I'm stimulating a greater sea of tranquility for myself. It can be very gentle, but the idea is that you're alternating left to right and doing that bilateral tapping. You can do a bilateral tapping anywhere on your body and it will help do the same thing. Sometimes I like giving myself a big hug and I will just tap alternately all the way down my body. Yes, and somebody here is saying all alternate nostril breathing, that's also a great thing. Here's another one is uh, if, you're, if your mind is racing, you know, and, and in this culture, we're very heady, right? So I find this a lot in my practice. People are just really in their heads. There's these points right at your temples. Massage those. If you're, if you're just feeling like your brain is going overload, just massage those. and it just helps calm the mind. Mm, that feels good right now. Thank you. All right, any other, uh, any other requests or questions? Thank you all so much for spending this time with us. It's really uh, been enriching for me um, to just be in community again and see some of your faces and share these tools with you. So I want to just offer my gratitude to you and my gratitude to Jewel, the Inner Resilience Network, Transition US, and Daily Acts for supporting this meaningful work in the world at this time. I feel profoundly grateful to have work to have meaningful work, to have meaningful work that can be of service time uh, feels like a great blessing. Yeah, I uh, want to make sure everybody knows because um, some of you are gonna be getting off and, and not joining us for the meditation um, or at the end of the meditation, maybe you'll just be in a different space and you'll want to just go ahead and um, you know, get off the call then. And you're welcome to do that or stay on with us for the practice but um, wanna make sure you know that we have um, a, a ongoing uh, offerings so that we can keep coming back together mm -hmm. in this way. Um, and it will begin with this Wednesday night, um, creativity and play. I'm calling it the Play Cafe, Wednesdays, uh, Pacific time at, at uh, five o'clock Pacific time, um, every Wednesday. 
play cafe and then we're also going to be doing a connection cafe which uh we'll, we'll go into each time as we can go into some deeper uh one of these one of these many subjects we've touched on we can go into each of those a little deeper so i don't know actually i'm not sure what it's gonna be called yet i'm calling it the connection cafe but if anybody you have any suggestions please please come to the open meeting the inner resilience and open meeting every third uh, Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time. If you want to have, be part of our um, planning and co-creating uh, process and give suggestions. So um, let me know, email me if you want to be part of that and I'll send you the link. So um, any other burning questions before we go um, into the meditation? Any other, like anything at all that just feels Oh, somebody did ask to do the serenity point again. It's right here. It's right in the sternum, you know, that hard, flat place in the chest. And you can tap it and you hear this little hollow. I tap when I'm feeling especially stressed. I massage if I'm kind of like less stressed. So <laughs> that's just my personal preference. And after doing it for so long, I notice that I'm doing it and I might not even be aware that I'm doing it. It just becomes like a, an unconscious reaction to the stress. The position on the sternum, it, it's just the center of it. I mean, you can get technical and say, oh, it's three fingers down from the, you know, blah, blah. I don't do that. I just kind of feel it's right, right in the center. Wonderful. All right. Well, so much gratitude to all of you. And I'm looking forward to um, entering this meditation journey uh, with those of you that are able to stay with us. And, uh, and for those of you that can't, please do email me for any further questions or comments or suggestions or feedback. Um, and if you feel like donating to the ongoing efforts of this, there was a, a donation link in the confirmation email. So really appreciate that. That just goes to continuing to be able to do this. So, um, yeah, Anne says you'll instinctively know when you're on the spot that works for you. That's a really good comment, Anne. Thank you. That's important. And that's true for any, any, any of these pressure points. God, isn't that just so true for life in general? Mm -hmm. You just yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. All right, my friends. Well, I'm going to do a guided imagery. Um, I enjoy guided imageries uh, because it is the conscious use of imagination to create positive images in order to bring about healthy changes in our body and our mind. Creating these mental images is nothing new. Um, we do it all the time. We daydream. That's a type of visualization. Um, guided imagery can take this natural process a step further by working with our imagery um, it can be quite insightful. We can glean a lot of personal wisdom. And this is really an ancient practice, even though we do have the scientific evidence to substantiate its use and its benefits. The power of our imagination um, has been used to heal people for eons. Traditional folk healers use guided imagery to treat ailments. Um, it's used in all in all indigenous practices all across the world have used some form of guided imagery in their healing. So we're gonna begin by sitting or lying in a comfortable position. Go ahead and let yourself get comfortable. Feel the support of your body against the floor or the chair and allow your body to soften. Breathing in and out. And if you feel comfortable, you may lower your eyes or close them completely. Continue breathing. Allowing your awareness to move to your breath. Breathing in, feeling calm. Breathing out at peace as we prepare to go on a mental journey. I 
I invite you to imagine yourself deeply rooted to the earth through your feet and the base of your spine. Imagine yourself connected to the pulse of the earth and the mycelial network that feeds and nourishes all living things. Breathe into this connectivity. Now imagine yourself energetically rooted into the universe through the top of your head. Imagine yourself connected to all of life, all that has ever lived, all that will ever live. And imagine all the love in the universe, like a psychic mycelial network that intuits your needs and responds to your desires. And breathe into this connectivity. The earth and the universe are supporting you. All of life conspires for your benefit. I invite you to imagine yourself in a very special place. It could be a real place, a place you've actually been, perhaps a beautiful place in nature, or a comforting place like your own home. But your special place may also be an imaginary place, a place in fairy tales. Should more than one place come to mind, allow yourself to just stay with one of them. It doesn't really matter which one? What matters is that it is a place in which you are completely comfortable. Just allow yourself to imagine yourself comfortable and secure. And appreciate this scene with all of your senses. Imagine what you hear what you smell. Imagine feeling the air as it caresses your skin. Experience the ground securely beneath you. Imagine yourself touching and feeling into the environment you imagine. You might even notice yourself in this environment. What are you wearing? What time of year is it? What time of day? You may notice the colors around you. the temperature, the feeling. Just notice the qualities of that place that make it feel secure, comfortable, safe. Now I invite you to look around you to see if there's anything else that would make this place more comfortable for you. Perhaps there's something that you need to remove or something that you need to bring in and then do that. And notice how your body feels. And now I invite you to imagine looking into the distance and you notice a wise and helpful being moving slowly towards you. 
coming to offer you support and guidance. There is nothing threatening about this. You are completely comfortable and safe. This being wishes to help. Begin to imagine this wise being. Imagine what gender or age or species it might be. Maybe it's an animal. Maybe it's somebody you know. Notice the size of the person or being, how it is dressed. But in particular, pay special attention to how it feels to be in the presence of this being. And if you feel warm, comfortable, safe, you know this is your inner guide, your wiser self, however you want to qualify that. Now, as this being approaches you, greet it as you feel appropriate. You can make contact with thoughts or words or movement. This wise being is here to help you. Perhaps you have a question you would like to ask. Perhaps this wise being has a message for you. I'm going to be quiet for a couple moments to allow you to spend time with this wise being to receive any messages that are here for you. I encourage you to listen, to accept the message as it is without having to overinterpret it, but just receive it. In a moment, I'm going to begin to ask you to come back. But before I do, your wise being may have a gift for you. If so, I invite you to accept it. And give your gratitude. I invite you to give thanks now, knowing that you can return anytime you wish just by doing what you're doing now. 
sitting or lying down in a comfortable place, allowing your eyes to come closed and imagining your special place and your wise being. But for now, and at your own pace, let your breathing deepen. And very gradually, bring the awareness of your body on the chair or the floor, feeling the support of the earth beneath you, feeling the love of the universe all around you. Bring yourself back slowly, gently, and when you are ready, and only when you are ready, gently open your eyes and come back to present moment. At this time, I invite you to take the next four or five minutes to either sit, I'm getting the cue three minutes, to sit quietly in reflection or to move your body in any way or to write or to draw about your experience with your wise guide. It might be helpful for you to jot down some notes about the message or the gift that you received from your wise guide. And I'm gonna put on some background music. Um, for this time, we're going to be, Nicole and I are just going to hold space for you to integrate and download whatever it is that you're harvesting from this meditation. And then at the end, we'll have time to just check in before we close. So I'm going to turn on this little background music. Take a minute or so to continue. We'll 
or it could be Acknowledge that three minutes might not feel like enough time to get your thoughts down and that's okay. You have the rest of the time once we get off the call and I would encourage you to stay with it. Um, but for now, I wanna bring to this moment, I want to acknowledge that anytime we do guided visualizations, we are engaging in a practice that alters our state of consciousness. And so if you're feeling um, really open, um, maybe sometimes people feel extremely open and might feel dizzy, I wanna invite you back into that grounding practice, feeling the support of the earth beneath you, engage in your tapping um, or any of the things that you need to do to bring you into present moment in your body. So we take a collective breath together and we invite again, any last minute chat feedbacks. Otherwise we're going to go ahead and close this call. Um, and just, uh, we'll be sending out an email to all of you announcing the next offering and hopefully uh, we'll see you again. Thank you for um, joining us and trusting us enough to spend this time with us. And big virtual hugs, <laughs> big social distant, socially distant hugs to all of you. In fact, one thing I always like to do at the end of my calls is we unmute us, all of us get to be unmuted and we just do a shout out of a verbal hug. So why don't we do that before we close? Let's see, I think I can unmute everybody. Unmute all, there we go. Humongous hugs. Uh, <laughs> cool hugs. Big hugs to all. <laughs> Love you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yell out whatever you want to yell out. We hear you. I'm out. Oh, God. <laughs> Blessings. Thank you. Next time we'll be able to have some sh some sharing with all of you. We'll do breakout rooms and have time to share. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Be well. Be well. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to, to meet you, Robert. And Thanks. all those that I don't see. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Yes. If anybody wants to just mention anything, you can do that while we're still on here as, as people are leaving. Feel free because we're all unmuted. This is the informal moment. <laughs> Okay. One, one thing I was going to say is that um, we need to heal ourselves so we can heal the world. And this process is not the beginning, but a, a process part of